Robert Weibel is a figurative artist and printmaker from Fresno, California. About 15 years ago, he broke out of his middle management career, replacing his inbox with something more spiritual. His growth began with his pursuing the artistic path, exploring many mediums, like rendering and mesh. There was a powder-coated steel installation at the Superior Court there in Fresno. And he did the artwork for a Pacific Fusion Sushi Barn Lounge. Remarkably enough, he's recently begun painting with gunpowder. Inspired by the father of this technique, the Chinese-born Sai Kua Cheng, who is also renowned for his signature explosion events such as the pyrotechnics of the Beijing Olympics. When Robert paints with gunpowder, the few seconds of spontaneous creation are recorded and the singular result of each unique event really gets him fired up. Oh boy. When you talk about creation and then I've started doing gunpowder, well, gunpowder is typically, historically, and almost 100% destruction, almost always. Well now, I'm using gunpowder to create, you know, so it blows up, but it also makes an image that sometimes is fantastic. And it's like, how did that happen? We have this whole long history of stuff of, of killing people and wiping out buffalo and all that, and then suddenly we can do this and, and it's, it's doing something, it just like switches the whole thing, it turns it upside down. In some way, I'm trying to kind of get in touch with my own history. I've done kind of Asian influence stuff because of time in Japan and for whatever reason. And so since the gunpowder started, I'm doing this American bison kind of series. And somehow that fits for me. I'm kind of, it's, my culture really is, is more the old West. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff about Western art and wildlife art and all these kinds of art, you know. I could do birds or I could do whatever is in front of me, but I could do that with watercolor or, you know, some other medium too. If I can do it in another medium, then I'm not interested in doing it with gunpowder because it's, it's all new, so it's, it's, uh, it kind of deserves its own subject matter almost. Like I said, you can imagine a thing this big yeah. when it's as big as a sheet of plywood. So this is, this is two burns. This is like everything was laid out and I have these big masks on there. So there's one, two, three, four, and that golden color. When I'm doing printmaking, there's no real danger, you know what I mean? I might mess up or spill ink or I don't know what would happen, you know, the worst thing. But with gunpowder, because it's a real dangerous, volatile uh, thing, and no one else is doing it except Sai Kua Cheng, you know, the big master, the international star, there's no, there's no um, kind of format to follow or technique, you know, book. There's a part in this process with gunpowder where setting up the stencils or a lot of that process is, is just fine, doing that muscle memory and just kind of going on automatic. But once I get to the point where uh, the gunpowder is exposed and it's out and I have a lit uh, piece of incense or whatever I'm going to light it with, that then I have to engage right. real focus and real clarity and be real, you know, mindful of what's going on. So there's kind of a switch, you know, I go along and get all set up and then it's like, Okay, uh -huh. you know, and then it's a whole different experience. Then it's like an event. Then, you know, it's yeah. like you light the fuse and step back. And So I'm just going to do an experiment because I want to see how these different masks work anyway. So some of them I know, sort of, but... Okay, so here I got wet rags. I'm gonna light this, and it'll probably go cut the sides, uh -huh. and we'll see what we get underneath it. Uh. Yeah, so now I see.
if I get the fundamentals down and I'm going along and doing whatever I'm doing, you know, some kind of creative process, if I'm making a print or setting up for gunpowder or something, there's a time when, when I'm at my best. There's an alchemy, there's a change, there's something, you know, that happens, and it happens when you have, you know, you have your tabla rasa, your blank slate, and then something's created. When that change happens at its best, the artist changes too. And I think that happens in a way with a viewer too, when they connect to a piece and there is something very special that happens and changes when they see, I know that's happened to me. You know, I wasn't an art major, but I can remember being young, like even a teenager and and hitchhiking to San Francisco and goofing around with some buddies and stuff and go, oh yeah, an art museum, let's go in here, kind of. I mean, it's completely random. And seeing big, colorful, abstract things and going, oh, I didn't even know anything like this existed in the world, you know? And it just like kind of made me step back and I thought, and that kind of experience stayed with me my whole life, you know? So those, those things when people talk about um, some art you know, and go, well, what is that? It's a big color field. And you go, yeah, it is. You know, it's like, <laughs> it sure is, you know, <laughs> whoa, you know, and, and puts it out there and says, this is all there is, just this big thing, just regard it. And so there was something important about that, that, that I had that experience, you know, changed me in some way. <laughs> Don't breathe, that's toxic. Ah. It was important for me to start late in life learning. I, I, I don't have the, a bunch of old tapes from, um, you know, art school, so I'm lucky, I think. And I can remember somebody, somebody I like, but they were, you know, they're real um, academic and we're talking about, well, that's something, something, and they had a bunch of labels oh, for right. that style, and I was going, yeah. I'm not even quite sure what those are, but you know, that's fine. I really like it. I've never seen these kinds of lines before, you know, and so I like it because yeah. it's new to me, you know, I like so, it. I like so, it. I like what you're saying. yeah. Right. I've done a couple projects where it's a commission. I did a big restaurant thing with a guy that was, is a big, you know, he's, he's pretty recognized. The, the sushi. Yeah, the row, oh. yeah. And Michael, I mean, he was wonderful and he's interior design and I'm the artist, and then there's the owner, and then there's people that fabricate some of this stuff. So suddenly I'm in this mix, you know, that I'm not just an artist, I'm an artist which is part of this whole team. That's a whole different thing that I hadn't done. Well, you know, I had um, pretty quickly I had to realize this isn't about the art, this is about the collaboration, you know. And once I kind of got that, then it was like, and it's not going to come out the way I think it should either. And also, it wouldn't be realized without the collaboration. I have to answer to some voice that's not one of those old voices. It's not written down. It's somewhere that I have to find in the fog or something, or just mm -hmm. not, not even find it. Just go, OK, I know it's going to be there. It's that bridge. I know it's going to be there. I have to take that step, you know, and, and just do it because um, that's, the, that's the most important part of the whole process, is that step out into the fog. Yeah.